Welcome to the Robert W. Hughes Teacher of the Year program. My name is Rachel Debegar, and I'm the Executive Director of the Education Foundation of Alachua County, and I'll be your host tonight. While this year has certainly presented us with so many unforeseen challenges, we are so excited to be here tonight with you, recognizing our 40 outstanding teachers right here in Alachua County. Each year, the Education Foundation supports teachers through our Catalyst for Change program, as well as partnering with the Teacher Professional Development Office. However, every year consistently, our favorite thing to do is recognize our teachers during Teacher of the Year. We are so thankful for your continued hard work and effort that you have put in over the last 10 months, and particularly this school year, as you have helped our students achieve more than they ever thought possible during this time. We know it hasn't been easy, and we want to say thank you. Someone else that would like to address you and say thank you tonight is our brand new superintendent, Dr. Carly Simon, and I'm excited to introduce her to you now. Good evening, everyone. It is a wonderful occasion for us to come together, and I'm sorry we can't do it together and be in person to celebrate this wonderful accomplishment. Of course, this isn't the first event that's been radically changed by the pandemic, and it probably won't be the last. But hopefully we're closer to the end of the crisis and the beginning of moving forward. When that time comes, I look forward to meeting all of you face to face and talking about the ways this district can support you and your vital work. As awful as COVID has been, especially for those who have lost family and friends, there have been some bright spots here and there. We've all seen and heard and read stories of great courage, great sacrifice, and great compassion during this time. Stories of people helping each other through these tough times, stories that help restore our faith in humanity. Of course, we've seen stories about people who've learned just how hard it is to teach one child at home, let alone a full classroom of students. If COVID has done nothing else, it's demonstrated just how much students, families, and communities need their schools and their teachers, not just during a pandemic, but always. I know I did, I still do. My own second grade teacher from Duval Elementary was Diana Davis. She's had an enormous influence on my life ever since I had the privilege of being in her classroom. Miss Davis is now teaching at Twilliger, and I know she's made a difference for hundreds, if not thousands, of other children who have been lucky enough to learn from her and be in her awesome classroom. To our 2021 Teacher of the Year honorees, all of you are here tonight because you are making a difference in the lives of your students despite incredible obstacles. You've had to adjust to a whole new way of teaching while the world tried to adjust to a whole new way of living. You've had to juggle the needs of your students with the needs of your families, and you've done it admirably. You are essential workers, essential to your students, essential to this community, and essential to our society. Thank you for all that you have done, for me, for my children, for all of our children. Congratulations on being named Teachers of the Year for the 2021 school year. I want to wish you all the best the rest of the school year and throughout the rest of your career. I am in admiration of all that you have done. I would like to recognize our board members. Board Vice Chair, Ms. Tina Certain. Board Member, Mr. Rob Hyatt. Board Member, Ms. Diane McGraw. Board Member, Dr. Gunnar Paulson and our board chairman, Dr. Leonetta McNeely. And now I'll turn things over to Dr. McNeely. Thank you, Dr. Simon. Good evening, teachers, administrators, friends, and guests. Teachers, many people have asked, what does it take in order to teach? Well, you might have answered, that good teachers have to be patient, understanding, sympathetic, and nurturing. Answering this question now, you probably have added, in addition to those characteristics, one must be technologically savvy, 
a psychologist, a sociologist, or even a mental health activist. School year 2021 will never, ever be forgotten. During this year, you were expected to teach in spite of COVID-19, a pandemic. Whether you are brick and mortar, digital academy, e-school, high flex, or traditional, you are still with us. The main glue that has held you to the profession day after day is that you are extraordinary, amazing, impressive, awesome, incredible, unbelievable, wonderful, marvelous, spectacular, and unique. Why do you teach when co compensation sucks, professional development is never ending, long meetings that could be done in 20 minutes, or better still, just an email would do. Not the best working conditions, feeling less valued, new outfits of PPEs, gloves, and mask, but all in all, you keep coming back. The students, parents, administrators, the school board, community, and the superintendent are all excited because of your passion, commitment, and everlasting dedication. Thank you for being the best teachers in the county, city, and state. You are certainly consummate professionals. Your exemplary practices make every day for our students the days for a lifetime. Continue to be an inspiration, a role model, and an innovator. We love you. Congratulations. Finally, you will now hear from Carmen Ward, president of the Alachua County Education Association, who will recognize our other sponsors. Good evening, everyone. The ACEA is proud to recognize outstanding teachers in Alachua County through the Robert W. Hughes Teacher of the Year program. And I'm happy to say we have been a partner since the very beginning. This year, all teachers have done nothing short of heroic educating by rising to meet the needs of their students during a pandemic. I am pleased to announce that in addition to being recognized during this program tonight, each of our teacher honorees received a check for $500. These funds have been generously donated by sponsors listed in the program. Teachers have also received bags that have been filled with gifts donated by some of our sponsors. Our presenting sponsors for tonight's program are Cox Communication, Florida Credit Union, and SWI Photographers. And we are so grateful for their support. This year, these top three sponsors were joined by our new superintendent, Dr. Carly Simon, at the Principal's Honor Roll sponsorship level. If you see any of our sponsors around, please let them know that we appreciate their support of our Alachua County Public Schools. And you will now hear from Melanie Shore from Drummond Community Bank, who will give you the history about how this special evening came to be before we introduce the Teachers of the Year. Thank you. In 1992, Robert W. Hughes, former superintendent of schools, established the Alachua County Teacher Recognition Program. When Bob was the Alachua County Schools superintendent, he wanted to find a way to recognize our teachers and make them feel special and appreciated. He worked with our local business community to help raise money, and this event was born. 
29 years later, we are here, and it all started with this great man. This prestigious award was instituted in honor of Mr. Hughes to recognize the many outstanding teachers in Alachua County. This program now celebrates 40 leading teachers across the school district. When I was asked to serve on this committee 29 years ago, little did I know the special meaning this program would have for me. This spring, my daughter completes her master's degree at UF in early childhood education, and she will start teaching this fall. My love of this program and for teachers in Alachua County certainly has deeper value and means even more to me this year. So now you know the history and importance of this great event, and we're excited to begin this year's event. And now I'd like to introduce to you one of our longest standing partners, Mark Starr from Florida Credit Union to recognize our high school teachers. Good evening. Florida Credit Union was originally established in 1954 as the Alachua County Teachers Credit Union and catered to the financial needs of local educators. Since then, we've grown to serve more than 113,000 Floridians, but we're still owned by our members who include many teachers of Alachua County. This year, teachers wore many hats, from educators to therapists to, th to tech support. You did it all. As parents, as business people, and as your neighbors, we understand just how important teachers are to the success of our children and our community now more than ever. All of us at Florida Credit Union are so proud to be part of this wonderful event recognizing the excellent work these teachers have done. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our teachers for helping build a brighter future for all of us. Tonight, we'd like to honor educators who have gone above the call of duty both inside the classroom and beyond. So without further ado, I would like to present Alachua County's High School Teachers of the Year. Suzanne Warner, Buholz. Well, that's exciting Hi. about both the academic as well as the well, I think as a school counselor, we have a unique opportunity to work with students individually to help them look at their future goals. And what I really want them to do is think about where they want to go and then help them reach that potential. Well, you've been thinking about this, haven't you? <laughs> Emily Bullock, East Side. And if you have questions as you're brainstorming, I want to give you guys quiet time to actually think on your own first. I'd like to make sure whatever they choose in their professional life, life, that they lend a discerning eye to the pedigree and the significance of the data that they encounter. And think about so the all the statistics that you have learned so far. So own. what kinds of things did we calculate from a sample of data? We could find the average. We could find the median. Cassidy Klein, A. Quinn Jones. Then, after I corrected his rough draft, he submitted his final paper. Which looks a lot of my students don't have a great relationship with school. So, my classroom, um, we try to make learning fun, we try to make it engaging, and we try to make it fit their level so they feel like they're succeeding in some way each day in the classroom. So, I'm going to ask you, would you rather do this or that? And you have to answer. So, the first question is just... Monica Benson, Sydney Lanier. Yesterday was Thursday the... 7th. Good. It was January 7th yesterday. Today is Friday, I really want January. my students to be able to advocate for themselves. It's my responsibility to teach them how to communicate their wants, to become more confident in their abilities to express themselves. <laughs> Jennifer Bennett, Professional Academies Magnet at Lofton. The head itself needs to go just like, I mean, just a fraction, just a little higher up here. And then um, what I'm hoping all of the students walk away from from the experience of working together this year is um, more than anything confidence, the understanding that we as creatives are contributors right now to society in a way that we couldn't have ever dreamed of years ago. Okay, so like maybe do a couple of passes here. I'm just going to do this one little section right here. And then what you're going to do is take your finger. Denise Cueto, Newberry. Schools that are not separated by gender give students that opportunity to show their differences and to learn from each other. Every year my students show me how resilient and strong they are and adaptable to change and I think that I'm seeing this even more so during these strange conditions and they make it a joy for me every day to come to work. Um, and then from here you would list your reasons why. Brian Barnhouse, Santa Fe. 
you need to approximate how high your ball went, okay? Those trees are approximately 25, The most important thing high. that I would like my students okay. to get would be about character building and how to be a good human. Math can come second, but if we're a good person, then that will stick with well, us for the rest of our higher. life. Okay, great job, ladies. I appreciate you. Way to crush it. It wasn't... Now we've come to my favorite part of the Hopefully evening. I'm pretty sure that it's going to become your favorite part very soon. So tonight, we will be hearing from each of our three Teacher of the Year finalists. However, before we hear from our finalists, we'll be hearing from students who have been in their classrooms, learning from them, and getting to know them over the last few years. And those students will be able to talk about their teachers and the impact that they have had on their lives. Tonight, here to introduce Nicole A. Harris is Brianna J. Lawrence. She is a 2020 graduate of Gainesville High School. During her time at Gainesville High School, Brianna served as vice president and founding member of Ms. Harris's countywide literary arts and civic engagement organization, the Canes on Demike Poetry Club, and a secretary of the Canes Sisterhood. She is currently a psychology major at Santa Fe College with hopes of a career in sports or clinical psychology. Brianna is a longtime volunteer at the Pentecostals of Gainesville, where she helps with the children's ministry. Having taught her in both 9th and 12th grade, Ms. Harris can honestly say that Brianna's character and integrity have remained consistent. Ms. Harris is proud of the young woman that Brianna has become and is honored to have Brianna introducing her tonight. Hi, my name is Brianna Lawrence. I'm a former student here at GHS and one of Ms. Harris's former students. Um, if it wasn't for Ms. Harris, I can say that high school for me would not would have taken the toll for the worse. But thanks to Ms. Harris's bubbly personality and determined to, determination to make sure students succeed, high school was very easy for an introvert like myself. It's safe to say that I could go on all day about how amazing Ms. Harris is, but since we don't have that kind of time, I'll just state a couple things that couldn't go unmentioned. First, Ms. Harris's dedication to her students is one of a kind. I remember back in freshman year when she was doing canes on the mic, balanced teaching freshmen, and grading senior memoirs. Even if she was tired of grading, tired from grading, she came into the sixth period with an amazing personality and energy. Second, her ability to not just teach English, but her determ determination to prepare her students for a world outside of high school. Ms. Harris always made sure that as a student, I was developing a sense of responsibility and learning independence when it came to classwork, yet she never made me feel alone or as if she didn't care. I, I, didn't, I never understood why we had to do syllabus quizzes or even binder checks when I was in school, but after one semester of college, I can say I'm thankful that we had them. So, Ms. Harris, I thank you for all your hard work throughout the years as my teacher, club sponsor, and mentor. You're not just a teacher of the year, but you're a teacher that's one of a kind. Congratulations, you deserve this. You need all of the notes you took from your sources in your IG, a good attitude and critical thinking, I'm going to go over the rules again. And then I feel like the capacity is an important part of the prompt, and that would be involving, like, how it, does comedy have a... Poet Mark Nepo reflected that everything is beautiful, and I'm so sad. This is how the heart makes a duet of wonder and grief. This duet, if you will, is of a song with lyrics that teachers know all too well. Even before the current time that we find ourselves in, all educators can recall being ever so moved by the growth of a student, the same student that caused you the most frustration, or feeling a sense of accomplishment with a successful lesson or initiative you created, only to feel stifled and confined by a mandate passed down from an out-of-touch politician. This is a profession that can both delight, thrill, disappoint, and discourage all in the same breath. However, teachers make the most harmonious tunes out of these discordant notes. My gratitude swells up within me, and I fear missing key people that have contributed to this moment. So I'll mention the groups of people that have contributed to the educator I am today. I want to thank the long line of educators I come from who began their work and lineage in that little maroon village in Moortown, Jamaica, and now teach in Australia, England, Japan, and the States. My mom, who nurtured every inclination I had as a child and still volunteers long hours to help me be successful. 
Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, who has given me this path as a good gift to steward over. I want to thank the administrators who took a chance and hired me as an alternatively certified teacher with not much classroom experience as other education grads. The Santa Fe College Educator Preparation Institute that gave us so much insight into the classroom. My first year teacher mentors, Michael Scott and Mrs. Leota O'Malley. I don't think I've ever said your first name. The administrators that dealt with me being a weepy first and second year teacher who cried at the drop of a dime. The colleagues who consoled me in the copy room when I just couldn't keep up with that aforementioned duet. The colleagues who stayed and helped me along all the difficulties. I am humble that some of these same colleagues saw fit to nominate me. Select school board members who made me feel seen and heard when I felt invisible. The colleagues who put up with my zany ideas and let my students bombard their classroom to interview their students for research synthesis papers or take over as student lecturers as African history and host the history fair for 600 students to highlight the impact of African peoples all around the world. I get a lot of credit for being creative, but I kid you not, every idea I've executed comes from the experience I had as a learner in Miami-Dade County Public Schools. At Oak Grove Elementary Community School, it was the countywide oratorical contest with Mrs. Barnes that inspired me to create Canes on the Mic Poetry Club. It was the ancient Greek fair from the gifted program with Ms. Walsh and Ms. Ramirez, and the history fair with Mr. R. Osborne at Highland Oaks Middle School that was directly responsible for the fair that I curated. The daily reminder we recite in the classroom has words in it from my elementary principal, Dr. Susie Robinson. Mrs. Zeman and others at MDCPS understood culturally responsive teaching before it was a buzzword. In fourth grade, we learned to play dreidel and read Number the Stars coupled with Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry to do a literary comparison of the black and Jewish experience. My AP English teacher, Mrs. Geltzer from North Miami Beach Senior High, took me on a teacher shopping spree before I moved back to Gainesville to begin my career and let me fill up a cart of educational materials, supermarket sweep style, and has walked me through the hardest times ever since. I also want to thank the community of Gainesville and my community back home. Man, there's just not enough time to detail the immense support, the numerous fundraisers that have always been successful because of you, the influential guest speakers that would have otherwise cost hundreds or thousands of dollars to book, the physical labor, moral support, showing up to shows, taking distressed phone calls, and so much more. Truly, this entire speech could be dedicated just to the power of community. And believe me, this itty bitty little paragraph doesn't know justice. Where institutional support lacked or immense barriers existed, it was the community that unlocked opportunities for my students I could have never mustered up for myself. Thank you for that. In closing, I want to address all of you and those educators that are watching who are also in the trenches or the choir, I guess, if I continue the metaphor I began with. Anyway, <laughs> this is a profession that often rewards those that bleed and not bruise. Here's what I mean. We all know that the Grammy Awards don't determine all of the best music that exists in the world. Or the Oscars, that doesn't determine the best films. Many independent artists and indie music that exists flies under the radar for one reason or another. For instance, I think about my high school math teacher, Mrs. Walker. Mrs. Walker had taken me in after I failed to succeed in calculus as a 10th grader. She taught analysis of functions. She had no bells or whistles that anyone would necessarily reward, though she deserved it. She was just darn good at her craft. From feeling like a failure who couldn't keep up with my peers in a competitive school, Mrs. Walker's class restored a sense of worth within me. There are many educators that may not have huge, visible projects or colorful personalities, so they're often overlooked in the pomp and circumstance. But every day, they are deeply molding the trajectory of young people in their care. It was from these educators that I learned how to deliver content, how to have high expectations, and make sure that real learning is actually happening. We see you. With that, I want to leave you with these points that I now follow as guiding principles. Ashley Toussaint, an amazing, amazing Haitian social studies educator in New York and Florida, once said to me, 
Somewhere along the way, we were told that we were just teachers. I'm here to tell you that you're not just a teacher. That's a myth. Though it's always been the case, you are teaching during a global pa pandemic and the apocalypse, apparently. Teachers are overqualified. It's not an overreach to say that you are program managers, data scientists, instructional designers, youth development specialists, and more. You are a professional. Don't be afraid to embrace this, to protect your intellectual property, to be entrepreneurial, and ask for what you're worth. It is possible to be a good colleague that shares while pursuing other dreams. Taking care of yourself models a sense of balance to the kids in your classroom. Self-care, in a way, is character education. If you feel teacher guilt at even the thought of it, you already care so much more than others do. I encourage you to push that guilt aside and see yourself for what you are, a change maker and a life changer. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Jeff Wilkinson, president of SWI. As a local business who has long partnered with the Alachua County Public Schools, SWI has been a wonderful partner for our Teacher of the Year program. Although we'll miss their photo booth tonight, we are so happy to have them joining us to recognize our teachers. So now I'd like to introduce Jeff Wilkinson from SWI. Good evening. My name is Jeff Wilkinson, president of SWI Photography. SWI was established in 1972 by my parents and today is a second generation school portrait and yearbook publishing company located right here in Gainesville. Tonight we're here to honor people who have dedicated their lives to public service and the education of our children. Let's face it, we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for teachers like these. Teachers who challenged us, pushed us to find our limits, put up with us, and inspired us. Education in the year 2020 brought new challenges, whether it was intensive Canvas and Zoom training, building those online modules for the Digital Academy students, or just being there for students to talk to. These teachers went above and beyond what was expected. Therefore, it's my honor to introduce this year's Alachua County Middle School Teachers of the Year. Amy Sparrow, Fort Clark. So it's the condition of the atmosphere at a specific time and place. The most important thing that I want my students to take from me each year is to know that they are valued, that they can both learn in class as well as contribute. I think a lot of students feel like they're always constantly told that they're able to learn in a classroom, but the one thing that we forget is that students can also contribute, and I feel that that's really important. So climate is what we're expecting. It's looking at those averages. Katrina B. Lagan, Hawthorne. We'll continue to learn together, strengthen our reading, strengthen our skills, and, but I want us to also have some skills. I want my students to believe in themselves, to stand up for what is right, to have a true thirst for knowledge and learning, and to, and to know no matter how hard it gets and how difficult things may be, to never, never, never give up. So you look at this part with the problem, and it says, look. Lionel Jones, Kanapaha. Not distributing anything. So this is your ex, right? Yes. So plug that in for X. So I want all my students to know that regardless of any of their backgrounds or affiliations, that they can come to me for anything that they need at any time. So perfect. On this one, negative 18. Is that less than negative one? Jan Eric Brud, Lincoln. When he goes outside, he sees that the shadows disappear with the sunlight. He sees that Really, I just want them to have a desire to learn. Start to want to know more about your world, and that's just part of the human condition, is just learning more about our world so that we can do more in it. And I feel like that starts by that's learning how to know. And that's understand. why everything starts from this question of how do we it's learn. And pretty much every single one of our assignments stems back to that idea. World. And just like when we were talking about the prisoner in the cave, he really thought he knew everything there was. Lisa Morris, Mabane. We're gonna switch gears to conflict. 
We're going to describe what the conflict is. You're going to paraphrase. And this is a particularly bizarre year, so thinking about what I want my students to get from this year is more important than ever. But above all else, I want them to learn to value themselves and to value education and allow it to empower them and help them be successful wherever they may go in life. Good job, Mason's looking at his notes. That's exactly what you should do if you're not sure. Robert Goddard, Oakview. If you are going to build the housing for the gears right here, you could put a shaft collar inside and then it won't fall out. Is I teach robotics and I teach mathematics. In mathematics, I teach a lot of students that don't like math, and I like that idea of trying to sell that product that nobody wants. Now, make sure it's actually connected. In robotics, I want them to have an experience that builds an enthusiasm for learning, for being creative, and the shaft color is holding the force in for the shaft. Aaron Garlock, Westwood. So we added before we multiplied, and then the second one we multiplied before we added came up with different answers. I want them to become advocates for themselves, to be able to empower their own education and push their teachers to get the most out of their education. The multiplication and division are on the same level. You just have to do. And now I'd like to introduce Maddie Tibbetts and Katie Law who are both current eighth graders in top band at Howard Bishop, taught by Miss Amy Barris. Now I'd like to read something that Miss Barris has written about them. She says, Maddie and Katie are true leaders. They believe in having good work ethic, dedication, perseverance, and always helping others. Whether it be the bread that Maddie bakes from scratch and sells to raise money for a local youth organization, or the online store that she and Katie created as a service project to help raise money for our band, they are the prime example of what we want our next generation to aspire to become. I'm excited to introduce them to you this evening. Thank you, Maddie and Katie. Hello, my name is Katie Law. And I am Maddie Tibbetts. We have loved being Ms. Barris's students because of her determined attitude and her welcoming spirit. From eating lunch in the band room to playing passionately, Miss Barris has instilled a sense of leadership and responsibility in us. We have enjoyed the vibrant feeling that fills her classroom. We can always count on her to greet us with a smiling face. We can always take pleasure in knowing that Miss Barris wants the best for her students, from doing intriguing learning activities to going on fun field trips. Miss Barris is always honest with her students to ensure that they succeed in every area of their life. She excels at teaching both in-person and virtual students and never fails to include everyone. Ms. Barris always makes sure students are equipped with a safe and comfortable working environment. She not only cares about her students' academic integrity, but also their moral character. She puts her heart and soul into every lesson she teaches to her students. Ms. Barris will always have a special place in our hearts for being such an inspirational role model. We will forever cherish the memories and life lessons we have learned in her class. Now, now introducing Miss Amy, Amy Barris. One and two and ready and breathe. Thank you, Maddie and Katie, for being willing to introduce me this evening. After 25 years, there are literally thousands of students that I would have loved to have asked, but at the present time, I couldn't think of two better students to take on the task than these two young ladies. I absolutely can't wait to watch them and all of my students become the next generation of world changers. So many educators say that the last 10 months of their teaching careers have been exhausting. Isn't that the understatement of the century? We work twice, maybe three times harder than we normally would for sometimes half the response. Yes, we could complain about working conditions and not being paid enough and fearing for our health, of that of our own health and that of our family and being overwhelmed with so many things that the challenges of the past 10 months have presented us with. But those things are not the only things that define us as educators, at least not for me. I'd like to share with you some of the positives that I think have come out of all of this craziness. I'm grateful for the opportunity to stretch my imagination, to enlarge my bag of teaching tricks, and to use the reason we are in our current position to make myself a better teacher. I am grateful for the resilience that my students have shown throughout the pandemic that allow me to continue sharing my love of music with them. 
I'm so grateful for their resilience also because it is really giving me a window into seeing how much I can truly raise the bar to challenge them. I'm grateful for the way the faculty, staff, and administration of Howard Bishop have come together, not only to keep our school family safe and healthy medically, but also mentally and socially. We've had the opportunity to tackle the tough issues of social justice, inequities, achievement gaps, and other things that need to be kept in the forefront of our minds to ensure that every single student that comes on our campus, whether they in our, are in our personal classrooms or not, leave our campus successful and able to be productive members of our society. Music plays a huge role in these topics. I can think of no better way to start teaching my students how to make their world a better place than through music. Ted Turner once said that music has the power for bringing people together. With so many forces in this world acting to drive wedges between people, it's important to preserve those things that help us experience our common humanity. If recent ev world events aren't a reason to make sure every child is exposed to music education in some fashion, then I don't know what a better reason would be. I urge my colleagues to find the positive that you can take from your current teaching environment. There are many, even if they may be difficult for you to see right now. There are so many other things I could say about teaching through a pandemic, but having been in the profession for 25 years, I refuse to allow this one world event to define my career and all that has come out of it. For the record, music education is not what I do. It is who I am. It is every fiber of my being and something that keeps me going every day of my life. Sharing my love of music became my mission almost 35 years ago when I walked into my middle school band room for the first time. My middle school band director inspired me with a love of music so much that by the time I was in eighth grade, I knew without a doubt I wanted to be a band director. Here's the thing though, sharing my love of music is not limited to just my own students. It applies to every single person I come in contact with my students, their parents, and especially to college students that are about to enter the profession. The education profession receives a fraction of the credit it deserves and is not as enticing as a career choice as it once was. Because of that, I have made it a personal mission to prepare future music educators to the best of my ability so that the profession I fell in love with so many years ago continues to thrive. It is also important for me to share my love of music with my colleagues who teach other content areas. I want them to see that the fruits of their labor actually come together in my classroom as one on a daily basis. Music is science when we learn how to manipulate our instruments to play in tune with each other. Music is mathematics when we use a complex set of operations to determine what notes to play, when to play them, and for how long to play them. Music is foreign language when we learn terms and symbols in Latin, Italian, French, German, and Spanish, to name a few. But the most unique foreign language is to interpret a series of symbols on a page that translate into beautiful music. Music is physical education when you think about the amount of coordination and lung capacity it takes to play an instrument. And by the way, my students are masters at multitasking. There are a minimum of eight to 12 concepts that they must process in their brains simultaneously just to play a single note. Most of all though, music is art. It allows a human being to take all of these dry, technically boring, but very difficult concepts and techniques and to use them to create emotion. And that's something that science can't duplicate, humanism, feeling and emotion. Aristotle once said that music has the power of producing a certain effect on the moral character of the soul. And if it has the power to do this, it is clear that the young be directed to music and must be educated in it. I couldn't agree more. The arts have the ability to reach students not normally reached in ways and methods not normally used. We are so fortunate that the communities in Gainesville and Alachua County recognize the importance of a quality arts education for all of our students. Their support of the one mill has the potential of giving an underserved child a ticket to college simply because they had access to being in their school band. 
I don't expect every one of my students to study music as their career path. But I do remind every single one of them before they leave my classroom to always find a way to make music a part of their life. Why, you may ask? Well, I think it's best explained in a quote from a conversation that actor Lin-Manuel Miranda had in August of 2020 with then presidential candidate Joe Biden. The future of who we are lies in the arts. It is an expression of our soul. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Maureen Tartaglion from Cox Communications, who is a true supporter of public education in our community. She's an advocate for helping all students receive access to the technology and internet they need to be successful in school and beyond. And I am proud to introduce her tonight. Good evening. I'm Maureen Tartaglion with Cox Communications, which has been a proud sponsor of Teacher of the Year Awards for almost since its inception. It's always been one of my favorite events of the year, and I regret not being among you this year to thank you personally for all you do for our schools. This year, I'm even more in awe of you for not only enduring the many challenges you've faced this year, but also distinguishing yourselves and your accomplishments and earning this honor. Congratulations to you. I'd also like to give a shout out to two educators who applied for and won Cox grants to support their innovation in their curriculum. They are Ms. Wanda Moffitt of Sydney Lanier Elementary School and Ms. KK Perez of Hidden Oak Elementary School. I don't think there's ever been a year when our work and our goals were not more closely aligned. I'd like to thank the Alachua County School Administrators for working with us early in 2020 to identify homes that did not have internet so that we could fast track them to qualify for low cost or free internet at home. I also wanna welcome our new interim superintendent, thank our board members and our newly elected board members or reelected board members who now sit on what is a historic board for Alachua County. Finally, I would like to thank the Education Foundation of Alachua County staff and its board for hosting and coordinating this event and for everything it does for our students throughout the year. Again, teachers, thank you and congratulations. Ashley Purdy, Alachua eSchool. One of the things I hope my students take away from this year is a sense of ownership and an investment in their education. As fifth graders in eSchool, they have a unique opportunity to have some control over what they learn, how they learn, and when they learn it, more than they would in a traditional classroom. I hope that they take advantage of this opportunity and develop some skills that will help them in middle and high school and even beyond. Maria Junakas, Alachua Elementary. Which one should be placed in the center of the Venn diagram? What I want the students to get from me is that this is a safe place, mentally, physically, and academically. It's okay to make a mistake and know it's safe. Mm -hmm. If it's wrong, then I've accomplished it. Well, if you rewrite it, what happens? The three goes there? Yes. Lisa Logger, Archer. Do you ever wonder where words come from or where inventions come from? I hope that the students get I away this year with the thought that there's nothing they can't overcome. Uh, we have been faced with speed bump after speed bump. So we teach them academically, but this is going to give them a perspective that we couldn't have supplied normally in school. Like when you're getting ready to do that FSA writing, Aaron Williams, Childs. What part of the introduction is that? The hook, good job, okay? So we're going to have- I want my students to come out of this school year having positive memories and experiences, seeing that they can face challenges and succeed, and what we can do to make ourselves feel as safe and secure as possible. Okay, your topic, not your prompt word. Make sure you're underlining a topic word. Patricia Phillip, Duval. We know shapes go together to make new pictures, and so you can decide how you want to arrange them. 
So I love it when they're able to look around and see that there is art all around us in the world. But even more than that, what I really hope they'll come away with uh, after spending this time with me is to see how amazing they really are. That they are smart and they are strong and they are loved and they do have the power to make the world a better place. And that's what I hope they'll really get with our time together. Awesome. And you remember we talked about symmetry. So what you've got on one side, you've got on the other. Great job. Tony Johnson, Glen Springs. Recess. Recess. Two. How about tiger? Tiger two. Even though there's so much going on in the world right now, I want them to know they're loved and cared for, and I still want them to love learning, to know how to interact with each other, how to care for each other, especially during this time. And I always want them to remember their start to school forever. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and Sherry McElroy, High Springs. The second one, the past tense of sense. Fantastic, Ella. Last, do you want a piece of pie? Do you want a calmness of pie? Or do you want a part of pie? After a year with me in the classroom, I'm hoping that they feel loved, they feel welcome, they feel safe, empowered, and they have a love for learning that will last a lifetime. Artificial is something that is made by a person, but not found in nature. Haley Quartz, Hidden Oak. Tiana will work what? Harder. Tiana will work harder on eating her veggies. This school year has been a pretty crazy school year with the pandemic and having to teach digitally and um, brick and mortar at the same time. So I hope that they feel comfortable, they feel confident, they're emotionally stable, academically strong, and they're able to make up ground that they lost last year. Repetitive, very good. So repetitive almost sounds like another word you know. Wendy Fletcher Shannon, Idlewild. Identity, respect, privacy, and safety. Just like in the Constitution, I would like for them to be able to effectively learn how to recognize their emotions and to effectively regulate them People at school, feelings. home, and in the community. When we don't use our voice appropriately, and we don't respect others. Flo Basin, Irby. Good, how was your night last night? Good. What did you do? I played with my little sister, you know. I want them to know that as long as they try their hardest and they always give it their all, that they're doing exceptional and they're succeeding in school. Sounds awesome, thank you for sharing, sweet girl. Good morning, Jordan. How are you today, ma'am? And I really hope they learn to love books as much as I do. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. What did you play? Chelsea Bolin, Lake Forest. What if I put an exclamation point at the end of that sentence? The animal is cute. The animal is cute. Good job. My biggest hope and desire for the kids this year is that they really learn how to not give up. So determination is a big thing we work on. Doing things that are difficult. So when, when a, an assignment gets hard or a day gets hard, that they keep trying and they keep trying to figure things out without giving up. Is, it should be is. That is one of the rules. Nicole King, Littlewood. We have to figure out what word is up here on the board. Raise your hand if you can tell me what this is a picture of Mario. My biggest thing is being able to read and having that confidence that they can read on their own. But I also want them to know that they can do things that are hard or things that they've never been able to do before and know that they'll be successful at them no matter what they are. One more time. J am. So what's our mystery? Allison Bowie, Meadowbrook. What is this new month that we have just started? January. I hope my students will remember this year in kindergarten and have fond memories of our time together. It's been a challenging year in many ways, but our time off in the spring has renewed my love for teaching, and it is just a joy to be back in the classroom. Tuesday the 12th, right? Keyshell Shepard, Metcalf. How's your day going, Jamari? What color are you on? What color are you on? I truly want the students at Metcalf Elementary to understand that high expectations are set forth so that they can become 
all in all better citizens. This is implemented and put in place so that they can be successful throughout their lives. Can you control your feet a little bit more? Brittany Pearson, Newberry. Three, two, one. This is an inclusion classroom, so it's really important for them to learn how to work together with all of their classmates. I also want them to gain independence and try new things that are maybe going to be hard at first, but know that it's okay to make a mistake. They all rhyme. What makes them rhyme? Marlena Romano, Norton. One in itself is correct, but I need you to describe more what one in itself is. Like, what do you mean by that? I want them to be kind, inclusive people who embrace their uniquenesses and know that just soaking up as much knowledge as they possibly can will give them the ability to influence and make the world a better place. So it's composite because it has more than two factors, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you need to write in word form. Johnny Cromwell, Parker. One more. What is that? One more. We got it. But when they come to physical education, I want them to have a sense of normalcy. We can still have fun, we can still be positive, uh, you know, we still can laugh, and I think that's important for children. Uh, we're so tight with a lot of things, and I'm sure they deal with that at home. But when you come to physical education, I want them to understand that we're here um, to have fun. It's like we've never been nothing. Michael Graham, Rawlings. It comes from Germany. <laughs> yeah, it's not American. Your name is German. Yes, it is. I want my students to be able to face adversity. So I want them to be conquerors, overcomers, and not be swayed by the things that are going on around them. Be able to have a single mind focus. Your name is an African name. Did you know that? Seth Harrington, Shell. To be an enemy, you would have to like not like somebody or disagree with them about something. So for a team, what's something that would make them a team? Agree with them. A lot of talking with the kids, teaching them lessons this year has been about working with somebody else and respecting you know, other people and realizing even though they don't agree with you, there are some little things you can do to make them feel safe or comfortable. I think Shell's always been about that consideration of others and working as a team, building that classroom family atmosphere. Help her, Kenzie. There you go. There you go. Katie Jopling, Talbot. Let's do it up and down so you have a lot of room for tomorrow's step. And you're gonna make layers. My main goal is to continue to give them a creative outlet to help them continue having confidence to try new things and to know that they can be creative and make good decisions and express themselves in a different way. That will give you those layers that just like Ted Harrison does. Desiree DePerna, Terwilliger. Can you tell me some things that are the same about Frog and Toad? Um, well, they're funny. Oh, they're both funny? Do you think they're both I want funny? my students to learn how to overcome challenges put before them and persevere when things get tough. I want them to believe that even if they cannot do something now, if they keep working at what they want to accomplish, they, they can and will succeed. Way to be a leader, AJ. I'm so proud of you. Great job. Kathy McNamee, Wiles. So what do we know about art? Who can create art, yes? Artists can create art. An artist, so maybe this man in the picture isn't. Artist. This year being so different for everybody, including the students, I really hope that they take away um, how much school is providing a learning environment, but also an environment to be able to build community and be able to support each other. What would be another reason why, while I'm Katrina Lane, Williams. All the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then I want them to leave thinking that school is the best place on earth. I think when you can make a place that's just for them, that's safe, supportive, fun, it has all their best friends and a teacher who loves them, that they'll learn. And that's what it's all about, is making the school day magical. The more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. And now I'd like to present 
Amelia Dunn, and Kendall Ping, who will be introducing our elementary school finalist, Ms. McKenzie McNichol. Here are a few things that Ms. McNichol would like to share about these two students. She says, Kendall and Amelia are current fifth graders in the STEM magnet program at Stephen Foster Elementary School. In addition to being safety patrols, both Kendall and Amelia participate in Girls on the Run. Kendall and Amelia are both wonderfully hardworking and positive students, and they are enthusiastic about learning and a joy to have in the classroom. They show up every day ready to learn and excited to be at school. They are both natural leaders and insightful problem solvers. I am so lucky to have both of them in my class, she says. Well, I for one can't wait to meet them, and here they are. Ms. X. McNichol is a wonderful teacher. I've had her as a math teacher for two years and has been a great experience. She makes math fun by doing escape rooms and math adventures. Like one time, we went to space and race and pod races from Star Wars. Also, when we had to switch to Digital Academy, she tried her best to make online school fun. I'd choose her as a math teacher over any other teacher. We always have fun and we always laugh. Miss McNichol wants all of us to do good in math, so if we get a bad grade on something, she'll go over it with us in an awesome way. When we do math, she makes it super fun. We do lots of word scramble and get stuck in many places, like space, swamps, islands, and even a beach. Miss McNichol is smart, nice, creative, and funny. Like Amelia said, she does many awesome adventures with us. I did 77 divided. Okay, so I'm asking what would this be in feet and inches? Because we wouldn't say this is six feet and a half of an inch. We How many inches six. would it be? It would be 6.5. Yeah. Alright, it looks like we're sharing and we're figuring out the lightsaber length. So can you explain your process for how you're doing that? Uh, it's about three quarters of an inch. Good evening. My name is Mackenzie McNichol and I am so proud to represent Stephen Foster Elementary tonight. Before I start, I want to thank my husband, who I know as Ryan, but who so many students here know as Mr. McNichol who has been incredibly supportive and who is the most dedicated and hardworking teacher that I know. He is unfailingly upbeat about our profession and I strive to match his positivity every day. I would also like to thank my family, my mom, my dad, my stepdad, and my grandparents for their endless support and enthusiasm when I call to tell them about something funny that happened at school or a new project I'm planning for my students. Finally, while during the day we are isolated in our classrooms, the greatest professional learning comes from the teachers around us. I have been blessed to work with some of the most talented teachers in our district who have served as mentors to me. I'm a math teacher. One of the things I hear most often when I tell people what I do is, I'm just not good at math or math just isn't my thing. Would you ever hear an adult brag about being not good at reading? Or what about hearing someone say that they don't know why they had to learn how to write because they never have used it in the real world? Of course not, it would be absolutely absurd. But math, math is a different story. It is cool to be bad at math and it is fashionable to denounce math as useless to everyday life. And math is definitely everyone's favorite punching bag when it comes to decrying the current public school curriculum. A tweet during the 2020 presidential election claimed that since Mayor Bloomberg had spent $500 million on his campaign and there are 327 million Americans, he could have given $1 million to each American and still have money left over. So this tweet was read on air on a major news network and stated as a fact. So if you think about how many people that piece had to go through before it was read live on air, you can start to think about the level of understanding of numbers that the average person has and how it relates to everyone's attitude to math. I would say that my main goal as a math teacher is to inspire confidence in my students, to have my students leave my room free of the I hate math attitude, and to help them see that they can do hard things, they can persevere through challenges, and that they can solve everyday problems using math. I strive to use ambiguous real world problems like what route would maximize the amount of candy you get while trick or treating? Or if we were going to replace all the doors on campus, how many doors would that be? As well as projects that involve planning parties, feasts, or vacations. I am incredibly privileged to be an elementary school teacher. 
Elementary school is a magical place. When they come to us, they're five years old, only slightly older than toddlers. And when they leave, they're ready to start switching classes and put their, putting their books in lockers. We have the privilege of teaching students skills that they'll use for life. We have the honor of being able to say that we were the ones that taught a child how to read or that or we taught them what multiplication is. We have an awesome power, the power to build up a student's confidence, to inspire them to reach higher, but we also have the power to tear down a student or to make them feel less than with nothing more than a casual flippant comment. So we carry an incredible responsibility every day. As teachers, we know that teaching is an art form. We're performers for a captive audience, but unfortunately this audience isn't necessarily choosing to come to our show. It is a tough profession and it has certainly been a tough year. All we can do is keep showing up. It may be our second or 10th or 30th time teaching division or the causes of the War of 1812 or the sound a W makes, but it is our students' first time. And after all, we are all in it for the students. Thank you. And now we've come to the end of our evening. And before I announce our 2021 Teacher of the Year, I just want to reiterate everything that has been said tonight from our sponsors and various speakers to say thank you to all of our teachers, not just our finalists, not just our 40 honorees, but to all the teachers in Alachua County who have made such a difference, not only this year, but always. I think each one of us could probably share a story about how a teacher has impacted our life. So thank you. And now it is my pleasure to announce the 2021 Alachua County Teacher of the Year. Nicole Harris from Gainesville High School. Congratulations, Nicole. And I would like to now invite all of you to please stand by as we go live with Nicole for remarks.
Um, so I want to encourage you in what you're doing. Um, this award is not about me. Uh, every single person that was nominated tonight and those who weren't nominated could have stood up here. So I stand on the shoulders of giants. That's a cliche, but I do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, oh my God. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll do it again, Mr. Shelma. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>